Hey Gemini, we're going deeper. So I already pulled the cards we talked about a lot in the first session and we are going to talk about Venus first. So Venus moving through your fifth house, this is really exciting stuff. Venus rules over your 12th house of subconscious, um, but it also rules over your fifth house of pleasure. So being that like pleasures are generally something you're always discovering, you didn't really know, I'm literally getting dizzy as I say that, you may find that with the Venus transit out of Virgo, out of your fourth house and into your fifth house, there's this relief that comes. And because Virgo is going to host Black Moon Lilith, there is going to be this really weird energy for the rest of like the next nine months of you experiencing this weird feeling when you stay too long somewhere. You're going to have itchy feet. You're going to want to explore. You're going to want to venture out. You're going to want to bounce around. You're going to want to make yourself feel safe alone a lot. And that's okay. That's Lilith being in your fourth, the beginning of October or the middle of October and and right up until the beginning of November, Venus and, and Lilith are working together in Virgo. So initially there's this ease for you of being able to find compromise in order to make yourself feel safe. But after that, I'm not sure. When Venus moves into your fifth house, I feel like your pleasure center is going to be more focused on experiencing things, creating things. You may find that you're connecting with more people and relating with more people you may start a group a band there there could be a lot of things that you do venus in libra energy i've got the nine of pentacles you're better off alone there is an energy here of really enjoying your solitude knowing that you are enough all by yourself now there may be some secrets that are being held from you or you're deciding not to look at them just so you can have fun because you'd rather celebrate you'd rather be celebrated and recognize then really look at your intuition. So there may be a little bit of ignorance when it comes to not paying attention to what your intuition is telling you. And that could be because you want to connect with people and partner with people and work with people, but actually the best time that you're having is when you're by, be by yourself and you're in your creative energy, letting yourself feel secure, safe, slow down, enjoy, smell the roses. Don't push yourself out just because Venus is in your fifth house understand that like all good moments all worthy moments are stretched they remain in your memory longer they feel and last longer while you're in them and they're more in depth and they're more enriching so you don't need to spend all of your physical time with someone just to enjoy them make the smaller moments count now when i'm looking at the mars and the sun in scorpio um for Gemini energy, this is your sixth house. This is something that you're going to need to work on. So you are moving into something a little bit more serious that's going to require a lot of empathy um, for yourself, for your mental health, about what makes you comfortable. Now, interestingly enough, I got the King of Cups and the Two of Cups and the Six of Swords. I feel like you're moving away from agitation, but because you're being guided by your emotions. There may be that your emotions are pushing you to be more decisive, more critical, more intellectual um, when it comes to connecting with other people. Now, this is about health and routine. So it may be that you see that you share a sickness or an illness or a habit or a routine with someone else, whether that be a co-worker or there could be a masculine uh water sign co-worker that you really start to connect with and you you work with um and you find a good rhythm with uh but you are moving away from something that is not great into something more calm now this is reversed meaning that you could be moving into something turbulent expect that if you are when it comes to health issues expect that when you are dealing with something with a partner, maybe that you guys are going to a doctor together, maybe pregnancy stuff. Um, it could be fertility stuff. It could be health stuff. But if you're sharing in health practices with someone else, there, anytime you're sharing in something so personal as health with somebody else, you're kind of bending worlds because health is a personal thing. And it is always about your emotions and your intuition to listen to your body. Your body is not going to tell the story of somebody else's experience. It's going to tell your story. And so that's 
most important when you're sharing in something else. It may also be that there's a water sign in your life who is experiencing something health-wise that they need you to routinely show up for them. And that feels like it's a bit turbulent. It feels like it's a bit choppy. Move with ease. Trust your intuition and rest when you can. Now, going into the energy of Chiron in your 11th house. When it comes to friends, networks, you're going to have a fiery individual, probably a masculine Leo, Aries, or Sag, show up in your presence. This person is going to be very arrogant. They're going to be very uncooperative, okay? It may be that they are someone claiming to be your friend or whatever, and they're showing up arrogantly. They're showing up. The star is Aquarius energy as well. Um, and when it's reversed, there's just someone who they have a God complex and they don't consider anybody else in that. They just see that it's more like a demon complex. They consider their own healing, their own deserving, their own worth, their own world before anybody else. And they cannot see, and they're going to put you in a position of a rock in a hard place. Understand that that is part of this transit of Chiron in the North Node. You're going to be experiencing a lot of harshness when it comes to friendships um networks and these are not people you rely on these aren't your best friends but these are people that you have to deal with in order to get what you want and they're people that result in you acting of your best interest you're going to attract a certain kind of people that's what the 11th house is it's also hopes and wishes so if you're out there projecting as someone who is just going to take a lot of shit from other people you're going to get people who are going to take a lot of shit you know take all of your patience and take all of your support without much gratitude. However, if you're out there showing up emotional, sensitive, empathetic, honest, with boundaries, you're going to get people who are also sensitive, who need boundaries. You're going to attract what you are, okay? So it's likely there's a backlog of people who are expecting you to be of the vibration that you used to be, because that's what worked for them. That was the version of Gemini that they relied upon, that they liked. And now if you're evolving and changing that can make them uncomfortable understand that if this fire sign energy this masculine energy comes to you and puts you in a rock in a hard place and has this very self-centered expectation i need you to understand that sitting and waiting and pause means that you are guarded and protected you don't have to not feel rushed to make a decision let the decision provide its answer to you in its own time this person is extremely impatient. I highly recommend you sit back and ask yourself, what, what does this person bring into my life? A lot of the time, Gemini and I like to people please because it, just, it makes things easier to get everybody laughing and everybody on your side, everybody enjoying you. But you've come to an evolution after Mars went retrograde in your sign last fall. Like it's been a year now. You haven't been that same person. You had a lot of lessons to learn and you did. But there are still going to be people showing up expecting the old you. And now, instead of you, you know, showing up, being available to take those punches, to handle that self-deprecating, you know, sense of humor all the time and letting yourself be the bit of the joke, you can stand back and ask them why they think it's funny. I recently learned uh, from a Pisces Scorpio person that a great way to combat negative energy is to ask a question. So if someone says to you, what, you don't think that's funny? You could ask them instead of saying, well, no, I, I don't think that's funny because it hurt my feelings. You could say, why do you think that's funny? What part of this, what part of me made you think that I would accept that? Flip it around. And that is a very mercurial thing to do. And I highly recommend that you do that. If you get to these people who are putting you in a rock in a hard place, these combative, impatient people, ask them questions and make, put that pressure on them to answer instead of coming up with some kind of reasoning as to your feelings. You don't have to explain your feelings. You should be putting a spotlight back on them so that they can feel the heat of what that pressure feels like. Take your power back, Gemini.
Anyways, this has been the extended session. If you'd like to order a commission reading with me, you know where to find me. DM me or email me, astrobree at gmail.com. We'll talk soon. Love you, Gemini.